Have you ever wondered how you can use AI for grading in your math class or any class for, for this example? Um, so I've thought about it and at first I was very concerned about are we putting students' papers into these AI platforms to grade? Um, and for me, I don't want to do that. I'm too nervous about my students' um, work getting out there and all of a sudden getting copyrighted and all of those things. So then I started thinking about, well, what can I use AI for to help me more efficiently grade? Um, and so there's two things that I have found it has been so helpful for me. And the two things, the biggest things are generating a rubric and then also using AI for feedback templates. And that's the one that I feel like not a lot of people know about. Rubrics, we all know, hopefully we're all using them. They're definitely important when we're talking about equitable grading. Um, and you can, all you need to do is go to any AI, ChatGPT, Perplexity, Claude, um, and put in, create a rubric over, and then you can put your project in and it'll create that rubric, which is always great. And you can make it a proficiency-based rubric, um, anything you could think of um, that you would like. And I found I only have to tweak them a little bit which is really helpful and makes my grading of my math projects so much easier and more consistent. But the one thing that I just learned about that I feel like a lot of us um, can use to help mainstream our grading and again, grade things a lot more efficiently is using AI to create feedback templates. So you're probably wondering, what is that? Let's check it out. So first thing we wanna do is go into an AI. So one of my favorite AIs to use is Perplexity. So it's just perplexity.ai. And when you're in there, and you can see how Perplexity is spelled here. When you're in there, you can go in and ask it basically anything. But I'm gonna show you, let's say that I have a student um, working on graphing a quadratic function. And so let's say that I want to create a feedback rubric for grading solutions for this. So I would just type in create a, a feedback template for grading solutions to graphing the quadratic function and include sections for common errors and positive reinforcement. And why I like perplexity is it actually pulls from all the different AIs and it also the what online and you can see it's pulling things from like Socrative, it had things from Khan Academy and all of that on here, Smarter Balanced for scoring guides. Um, it used over, let's see, three plus 45 sources to create this. So you can see what it's created for me now is it's given me not only the correct answers, <clears throat> but it's given me feedback that I can give students if they get the answer incorrect. And this is great and, and I specifically said make the, um, feedback have positive reinforcement because we don't want to just say you did this wrong but give them some tools and some hints to be able to do this correctly and so here this is stated as the vertex can be found using and it shows them the formula and how to use it um, same thing when it comes to the y-intercept the axis of symmetry this is one i find my students always forget is that it's actually a vertical line it's not just a point so they always forget to write x equals one um, and then again, if the parabola is not opening in the correct direct, uh, direction, it gives you the feedback to give back to the student on that. Why I like this, and obviously showing this for just one problem is really like, you're like, I could do that in my sleep, but I love this for larger projects or even just for exams or lab work in my classes. I can upload the lab and tell it to create a feedback template for each question. That way when I have a, a class of 100 and I'm going through and giving them feedback, I'm not having to reinvent the wheel every time. I can just see, oh, they got the vertex wrong. Boom, here's the feedback that I use and just copy paste this right into the student work um, or into your wherever you're doing your feedback for the student. So it makes grading so much faster. Oh, they got this wrong, so here's what I'm gonna say to them. Um, and again, it makes it also consistent where you're telling students the same answers. I find sometimes if I get like, after I've gone through like 70 and I see the same error, I start to get really like angry. <laughs> so sometimes what I write back is not as nice. So this keeps me being nice and again, keeps it consistent. It also creates common errors. So for example, plotting points, incorrect Y values when plotting points. So it gives you feedback for that. If you're seeing a student has improper scales, it gives you feedback to say for that. 
the symmetry and the direction. Um, the other thing that I really like is that it gives some positive reinforcement that we can give students. So we always want to try to find something positive, even if they get the problem wrong, but they have maybe, you can usually find something right. Um, I like to start with that and then talk about, okay, it looks like here though, we have this issue. Um, it also gives you some steps for saying areas for improvement and then next steps that you can do in your classroom, which is really cool for that. Um, I want to just show you another, some other ways that you can use this feedback. Um, and let's see, I've got provide a feedback for students who have correctly identified the vertex but misplaced the y-intercept when graphing it. And this already kind of has that in there, but let's just say I keep on seeing this one and I want a little more specifics on here um, to give a student a little more feedback. So when we look at this, you can see again, it gives you excellent work on the vertex and then it gives you, talks about the parabola shape and then it shows that area for improvement. Um, this, these are kind of long. And so I would say if I don't want to write all of this or give them all of this, I can say shorten up the feedback. And what's really neat is that they listen to us and it'll condense it for us. So now you can see this is a lot shorter of a feedback. There's not as much verbiage, which I think is better because students kind of start to check out. So if the feedback you get isn't exactly what you want, it's going to give you better feedback after that. Um, so, and then I could also create a rubric for this. So I'm gonna throw that in. So create a rubric, a grading rubric for graphing quadratic functions with criteria for identifying key features, accuracy of the graph and mathematical reasoning. So just type that in and you can see here, it's gonna create a graded a rubric for me on this. And again, I can go through and change these scales. Um, I think they made it out of 100 points, but I would probably change it and do more of a make this proficiency based. And let's see what it does. So now you can see here for the proficiency based, um, because I needed more than just getting it right, you get 10 points. So now it's gone through and created a proficiency based rubric for me um, of mastery, proficient, developing, and beginning. So it makes it really clear to me exactly where I'm gonna be grading each student in each piece. Um, again, this is just a problem, so it's obviously not a huge thing that you would really do all these rubrics for, but this is a really, hopefully a good example to show you, you can really expand this out to any type of project. You can use it on exams, all of those things to really help you more efficiently and equitably grade your students' work and give them really good solid feedback instead of just good or wrong, but actually helping them, like we showed up here, identify, <laughs> get past these rubrics, here we go, um, help them identify where they messed up and help them understand what to do to get it correct. So, um, and that's really important for students when they make those mistakes to learn and grow from them and we need to give them that feedback. And so again, this just really has made my life so much easier. I actually have a Google Drive where I've just compiled all of this for each of my lab activities and my calculus classes. Um, so I know when I'm grading lab one, pull this out, I've got all the feedback template to give for each question on lab one and I just am simply copying and pasting. So it's made my life a lot better and I'm noticing students are doing a lot better on, on their work. For more of these types of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe on my YouTube channel. I'll be adding a bunch of more teacher tips focused on AI for a while, and then we'll go to equitable grading and talk about all the big buzz things that are going on in the world of math.